Hey everyone. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create something called the gene map. So before we get started, we're going to talk about kind of like the science behind it. And then I'm going to show you guys how to actually build a gene map. So first we're talking about how genes are actually linked together. Okay, if they're linked, that means that they're going to be inherited together. Okay, unless crossing over happens. So if they're found on the same chromosome, we say that they're linked together. Okay, which means that they're going to be inherited together, which means they're inherited together, they're going to end up in the same cells. Okay, but if they cross over, they will end up in different cells. But if they're linked, they will stay together in meiosis. So it, during anaphase 2 of meiosis, when the chromosomes separate from one side to the other, if they're linked, they will separate. But if they cross over, then they're no longer in the same side, so they'll end up in different cells. So I'm kind of going to talk a little bit more about that. So let's say we're looking at chromosome number 13. Okay, we have a pair, so this is the first copy of our pair. Let's hypothetically say this is from our mom, and we got all of the recessive alleles from our mom. On gene A, B, C, and D, we got all of the recessive versions of that. But on our second copy of chromosome 13, maybe we got this one from our dad, he gave us all of the dominant versions of the allele. So this version of our chromosome 13 would end up in one cell. So that means that one cell would get all of the lowercase letters. This version of the chromosome 13 would end up in the other cell. So we get all of the capital letters. But remember that crossing over normally happens. So if crossing over happened right here, so that this side of the chromosome went over here, and this side of the chromosome went over here, you would end up with one cell getting little a, little b, big C, and capital D. The other cell would get the big A and the big B, but they would get the lowercase c and the lowercase d. So we call those chromosomes recombinant chromosomes because they're now different than they used to look. So that's what I'm kind of talking about here. Um, when I'm building something called a gene map, I'm looking at the crossing over frequency between genes and using that to figure out how far away from each other they are. So it's always a straight line, linear means straight, and it's just showing where on the chromosome the genes are located. We use something called a crossing over frequency, or COF. The farther away the gene is found on the chromosome, the larger the crossing over frequency. And the closer together they are, the lower the crossing over frequency. And when I can use crossing over frequencies, I can kind of convert them over to map units. So it could be like one map unit is 1% crossing over frequency, but that could be like one centimeter or one meter on the chromosome. Okay, it's just like a unit that we could use just to differentiate how far away on the map it is from each other. Okay, so same with if I had 50%, that would be 50 map units. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. Remember that if they're farther apart, they have a larger crossing over frequency. That means they cross over more frequently, which means they're going to cross over more often. And that means that if they cross over, they're less likely to be inherited together because if they cross over, they're going to go to opposite cells. And if they're closer together, it's the opposite. So because their crossing over frequency is smaller, means it happens less it means it's less likely, okay? But that also means that they're going to be inherited together because they're not going to cross over, okay, as often. So we're going to do an example here that is talking about houses on a street. So it's taking this idea of making an actual gene map but relating it to maybe something that you can visualize a little bit better. So we have four friends. We have Arnold and Beth and Carlos and Deanna. And they live on a street somewhere. And we're trying to figure out what order on the street they live in and also how many houses are in between each person's house. So when I start questions like this, I always want to figure out who lives the farthest away from each other. So I have 12 between Arlen and Beth. I have 11. I have 3. I have 4. But I have 15. Okay, 15 between Arnold and Carlos, it's saying. So I'm going to start a number line. I'm going to number it from 0 to 15 because that's the biggest number I have. And I'm going to put Arnold at 0 and I'm going to put Carlos at 15. So that's how I start a question. 
I'm always going to cross out the stuff that I use in the information of the question. So I'm going to cross out that just so that I don't accidentally come back to it. So I know that I've used up that information. So I'm going to cross it out. So now I'm going to look at other tricks where it tells me Arnold or how far he lives from other people. So Arnold lives 12 doors away from Beth. So that means that at position 12, that's Beth's house. So I'm going to get rid of that one. It also tells me that Arnold lives four doors away from Deanna. So I'm going to put at position four, Deanna's house and get rid of that trick. But I still have two tricks left. So what I'm going to do with those is I'm just going to make sure that the math adds up. Otherwise, I've done something wrong. So Carlos lives 11 doors from Deanna. Well, if I add 4 plus 11, that equals 15. That's where Carlos lives, so that works. So I'm going to get rid of that. And then Beth lives 3 doors away from Carlos. Well, 12 plus 3 is 15, so that also works. So I've done the question correctly. That means that Arnold is always the first on the street, then Deanna, then Beth's house, and then Carlos. And it gives you a little map of where exactly their house is located. So that's how I would do it if I was talking about houses on a street. But now let's actually talk about a question about actual genes. So Morgan, the guy that studied Drosophila, which are fruit flies, looked at four traits that all were located on the same chromosome. So bar-shaped eyes or carnation eyes, fused veins, and scalloped wings were all found on the same chromosome. And these are the crossing over frequencies between all of those. So what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to find the largest one. It's 11. Okay, between carnation eyes and scalloped wings, I have 11% crossing over frequency, which just means that they're 11 map units away from each other. So I'm going to make a number line again from 0 to 11. I'm going to put the carnation eyes at 0, and I'm going to put the scalloped wings at 11. So now what I'm going to do, cross out that one because I don't want to come back to it and accidentally get mixed up. I'm going to look at what else I have information um, with a C or a carnation eyes in it. So I have 5.5 and 3, so I'm going to slot that information in. The bar-shaped eyes is 5.5 map units away. Cross that one out. And I also have fused veins is three map units away from carnation eyes so i think that this is the right order now i just want to double check the ones that i didn't use so if i look at fused veins and add 2.5 to 3 i get 5.5 so that one works out so i'll cross it out and then fused veins and scallop wings it says that they're eight away from each other well, 3 plus 8 is 11, so that works out perfectly fine. So that is the order on my chromosome that these four genes are in. So I'm going to do one more question with you. I just have random letters this time, and we'll just make sure that they put them in the right order. So again, I'm going to look at the ones that are the farthest away. It looks like Z and W are 8 away from each other, which is the biggest number. So I'm going to go 0 to 8, and I'm going to put Z and W on either side. Cross that trick out. Now I'm going to see if I can find something with Z. I have Z and Y are one away from each other, so I'm going to put Y at one. I'm going to cross that one out. I don't have any other information with Z, but now that Y is there, I can use this one and slot an X. So it's going to be two away from Y, but that would be at position three on my actual gene map because it's two away from Y, which is at one. 1 plus 2 is 3. So now I have these two other tricks. I just want to make sure that I've done it correctly and make sure that these work out. So W and X being 5 away from each other. 5 plus 3 is 8. That works out. So I'll cross that out. And then Y and W being 7. 7 plus 1 is 8. So that also works out and I'm done this gene map. So that is how you do gene maps. There are some questions in your notes if you want to try them out. Um, but I feel like gene mapping is pretty basic. If you have any questions, let me know. But if not, I'll see you guys tomorrow.